Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our honored guests. Speaker Mike Johnson. Leader Hakeem Jeffries. Senator Christopher Coons. Senator Shelley Moore Capito. Chairman Frank Lucas. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Miss Margaret Lee Shetterly. Miss Andrea Mosey. And the families of Katherine Johnson, Dr. Kristen Darden, Mary Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughn. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mike Johnson, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my, my colleagues in Congress, Administrator Nelson, Ambassador Greenfield, Ms. Shetterly, our distinguished guests, and to Dr. Christine Darden, who's watching at her home in Connecticut. As Speaker of the House, I have the great privilege of welcoming you to the Capitol today. The Congressional Gold Medal is the highest honor that Congress can bestow upon any group or individual. And we give it to show our national appreciation for the achievements and contributions of great Americans. Today, pursuant to H.R. 1396, we have the great pleasure of finally awarding this medal to the hidden figures. As you all know, this has been a long time coming. It was now many decades after these women began working for our nation's space agencies that we finally get to do appropriate honor for their work. You know these names well. Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, and Dr. Christine Darden. In the history of Congress, we've only had a few occasions where we've been able to recognize those who've helped us explore what is the final frontier. In 1959, we awarded this very medal to Dr. Robert Goddard for his research on space rockets, missiles, and jet propulsion. In 1969, Buzz Aldrin, and Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins addressed a joint session of Congress following their moon landing, and they also received this medal. In 1997, the state of Colorado gave us a statue of, of Jack Swaggart for his time as an astronaut on Apollo 13 and as a staff director of the House Committee on Science and Technology. And now, in 2024, we get the honor and, the, and have the honor to bring honor that is due to the giants on whose shoulders all of those astronauts actually stood. At a time when America, that's right, that's an applause line. At a time in America when our nation was divided by color and often by gender, these women dared to step into the fields where they had previously been unwelcomed. They excelled in science and math and made groundbreaking contributions in aeronautics. But these women didn't just crunch numbers and solve equations for the space program. They actually laid the very foundation upon which our rockets launched and our astronauts flew and our nation soared. And although we call them hidden figures, we shouldn't think of them merely as supporting characters in the American story of space exploration. They were the engineers and mathematicians who actually wrote the story itself. Their work proved that our, okay, that's right, I'm, that's right. There's a lot to applaud today. Uh, this work uh, merits that. And their work proved that our strength as a nation lies in our ability to harness the talents of all of our citizens and to look beyond divisions and into new frontiers where we all work together. It's my great honor on behalf of our nation to say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors by the United States Joint Armed Forces Color Guard, 
The performance of our national anthem by Staff Sergeant Amani Grosvenor of the United States Army Band Chorus, accompanied by the United States Army Band Pershing Zone Brass Quintet and the retiring of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation delivered by Dr. Barry Black, Chaplain of the United States Senate. Let us pray. Eternal God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, we're grateful for your presence at this Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony that honors the female human computers who made significant contributions to the U.S. space program. We praise you for being an equal opportunity distributor of talents. Thank you that you see faithful service, it is never hidden from you. Lord, thank you for inspiring Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, and Dr. Christine Darden to strive for excellence even when their exemplary efforts 
were not recognized or applauded. We're astounded by how their remarkable accomplishments enabled humanity to slip the surly bonds of earth, to dance the skies on laughter silvered wings, and to bravely go where few have dared to trespass. Inspired by their laudable example, may we strive for greatness in our efforts to honor you. Bless now this auspicious ceremony with your presence and approval. We pray in your sovereign name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Bill Nelson, NASA Administrator. Good afternoon, everybody. I often refer to the people of NASA as a bunch of wizards. That is a true statement, and today we honor some of those wizards, those human computers that started at a remarkable time going back to 1943. The remarkable things that NASA achieves and that America achieves build on the pioneers who came before us. People like the women of Mercury and Gemini and Apollo. People like Mary Jackson, Dorothy Vaughn, Katherine Johnson, and Dr. Christine Darden. And thanks to you, the members of Congress who made this day possible, and thanks to the late Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, who we miss and who led the effort in 2019 alongside Senator Chris Coons to bring these medals to life. And thanks additionally to the champions for the legislation, Senators Kamala Harris, Lisa Murkowski, and Shelley Moore Capito, and Congressman Frank Lucas. The women we honor today made it possible for earthlings to lift beyond the bounds of earth and for generations of trailblazers to follow. We did not come this far only to come this far. We continue this legacy as one member of the audience here with us today does every single day the remarkable Andrea Mosi. Andrea, who has worked for NASA for nearly 50 years, is the lead processor for the Apollo Sample Program. She oversees the moon rocks and the lunar samples that NASA brought back from Apollo. 842 pounds of celestial science. These samples are national treasures, and so is Andrea. The pioneers that we honor today, these hidden figures, their courage and imagination brought us to the moon, and their lessons, their legacy, will send us back to the moon, and then imagine 
Just imagine when we leave our footprints on the red sands of Mars. Thanks to these people who are part of our NASA family, we will continue to sail on the cosmic sea to far off cosmic shores. Thank you and God bless all of the recipients. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Margot Lee Shetterly, author of Hidden Figures, The American Dream, and The Untold Story of the Black Women Mathematicians Who Helped Win the Space Race. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Uh, to the members of Congress who are responsible for passing this legislation, Thank you so much. Um, it is good to see so many familiar faces from my hometown, so many familiar faces from NASA, which is also part of my spiritual hometown. Um, to Dr. Christine Darden and to the families of Mrs. Vaughn, Mrs. Jackson, and Mrs. Johnson, congratulations. This is like a family reunion. Now, scientist Andrea Mosey from the Johnson Space Center is here to accept the fifth medal that's being awarded today, and I just wanted to say a few words about that. To all of the other women who served our country through NASA's history as computers, mathematicians, data analysts, engineers, and scientists, women who are still largely hidden figures, women from all backgrounds and from all corners of our great nation, I am delighted that we are celebrating you today as well. Ms. Mosey, what a wonderful representative you are of that history. And you know, you have the toughest job here today because there are hundreds and maybe more than a thousand women standing on that medal today. Women like Pearl Young, who came from, uh, to the Langley Aeronautical Laboratory from North Dakota in 1922, and she worked as an instrument research specialist and the center's chief technical editor. Virginia Tucker came to Langley from North Carolina in 1935, and she became Langley's first head computer. And by 1946, Tucker had already trained and supervised more than 400 female mathematicians. That's 1946. Women like Susan Finley of California, she began working at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in 1958, and she contributed both hand and Fortran calculations to early satellite missions and later to projects Viking and Voyager. And this medal also shines a light on Mary Ross, who was a Cherokee woman from Oklahoma who worked on many aspects of aviation in the space program at NASA contractor Lockheed Martin. In their personal lives, these women were Girl Scout troop leaders, active in their churches and synagogues. They raised scholarship money for needy students, they delivered meals to the hungry in their communities, and they spent countless hours tutoring kids so that those kids, too, would see the power and the beauty of numbers. They believed in tending to the small d democracy that binds us to each other as neighbors, and as American citizens. And by honoring them, we honor the very best of our country's spirit. So thanks to all of you again. It is my honor to be here today. And congratulations to all of the honorees and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Frank Lucas, United States Representative from the 3rd District of Oklahoma. It's an honor to be here with the friends, family, and loved ones of today's gold medal recipients. Christine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, and Dr. Christine Darden. I was proud to join Eddie Bernice Johnson, the previous chairwoman of the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, in co-sponsoring the bill that awards these medals. Eddie Bernice 
knew a thing or two about being a trailblazer herself, having become the first woman and the first African American to chair the science committee. Honoring the hidden figures of the space race was an important cause for her, and I wish she could be here with us today to see the results of her hard work to celebrate the pioneering women of NASA. Four years, female computers, mathematicians, and engineers helped drive NASA's unprecedented achievements during the space race, despite facing gender hurdles. They were paid less, received fewer opportunities at advancement, and were not recognized for the contributions, often having to submit their work anonymously. Women of color, like Katherine Johnson, Christine Darden, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson, faced even more disadvantages from segregation and racism. And yet, they persisted in their work, helping to send John Glenn into orbit, to land the first humans on the moon, and to launch enduring scientific missions like the Voyager probes. Their achievements are all the more impressive given the challenges they faced. Awarding them the Congressional Gold Medal honors their lives and work and ensures that they will continue to inspire Americans for years to come. When the first woman lands on the moon in the Artemis program, she will follow a trail blazed by the women we honor today. I'm proud to have a small part. I'm honored to have a very small role in giving them the recognition they deserve. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Shelley Moore Capito, United States Senator from West Virginia. Well, I am absolutely thrilled to be here today, to be in front of all of you, and I celebrate the achievements of the women that, and this group of women that we are presenting with gold medals today, and their families. I know there's lots of family members here. Katherine Johnson, Dr. Christine Darden, Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, and all of the women, all the rest of the women who are very many who have contributed to the success of NASA during the space race. But you'll have to forgive me if one stands out in my heart, and that is my fellow West Virginian, Katherine Johnson. I am so glad that her daughters are here today, Joylette and Katherine. Uh, and much of their extended family are here so that they can honor their mother. This event truly speaks to the notion that your mother and her remarkable colleagues are hidden no more. It's been said that Katherine Johnson counted everything, but today we're here to celebrate the one thing even she couldn't count, and that's the impact that she and her colleagues have had on the lives of students, teachers, and explorers. Ka They all proved, and Catherine proved to us, that no obstacle is too high if you work hard and believe in your goals. And as a West Virginian, Catherine used her toughness and grit to surpass societal barriers and turn her dreams into a reality. Her legacy will be remembered every single time we look at the moon and remember how her work and their work took us there for the first time. I'm not only inspired by Catherine's story, but I'm also inspired, I got to meet her, I'm inspired by her kindness and her humility. I have no doubt that generations of little girls who also aspire to reach the stars will draw strength and encouragement from this legacy. Catherine's work is no longer hidden by the shadows of the men she put on the moon, and I am so excited about that Mar Artemis journey for our first woman. And she will ever be a star in the mountain state and across the country. So I'll end with this. When Catherine's daughters were growing up, she would ask them when they came home from school, what did you learn today? So today, at the end of this day, may we all say we learned a lot about these remarkable women 
who exemplified the best of what humanity can offer. Hidden no more. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Christopher Coons, United States Senator from Delaware. Good afternoon. It is such a blessing to be with you here in Emancipation Hall and to have just a moment to thank and recognize everyone who played a role in making this happen today. To my colleagues who've just spoken, as well as Senator Murkowski and former Senator, now Vice President Harris, getting this through the Senate and having such great partners in the House, and Chairman Lucas and the late Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson was a great joy. To the families of Dr. Christine Darden, Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, and everyone who helped win the space race, despite the restrictions of gender and race, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our history that challenges us to recognize a simple truth. As the chaplain said in the outset, God distributes talent and genius across the entire human family evenly. Yet historically, in our nation, opportunity was not. This amazing book, this historic film, made clear for all of us in piercing ways the daily indignities the barriers that were put up in the place of these women and so many others recognized today, and yet with persistence, with determination, with insight, with focus, they overcame. Our nation will not achieve its gifts and its greatness until we strip away all the remaining barriers so that everyone can have their contributions, their genius, and their skill seen. And know this, it's not just, although it is importantly, a landing on the moon that will make a dramatic difference for a future generation. It's all of you I look at today who are leaders in our military, in our foreign service, in our science organizations, here in Congress, in businesses, folks who've come from all over the country to celebrate and recognize those who came before you and the leaders you are today that are insisting on and making real the vision of a more perfect union and a better nation where the talents of all are lifted up to the stars to shine in the light of the sun. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony, Grammy, and Emmy award-winning singer and actress, Miss Audra McDonald performing America the Beautiful. God 
shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries, Democratic Leader of the United States House of Representatives. Good afternoon. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. To Dr. Christine Darden, to the families of Dorothy Vaughn, Katherine Johnson, Dr. Darden's family, and Mary Jackson. Administrator Nelson, Margot Lee Shetterly, Andrea Mosey, Speaker Johnson, Whip Clark, Senator Coons, Senator Capito, Congressman Lucas, members of Congress, and all those assembled. It's a high honor and a distinct privilege to join you all today as we recognize these four extraordinary women. Let me begin by acknowledging the contributions and leadership of the late great Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, whose legislation brought us to this moment. This gold medal ceremony celebrates the heroic contributions of four pioneering, patriotic, and powerful engineers, mathematicians, researchers, and other women who stand on their shoulders, whose collective intellect, ingenuity, and innovation helped America orbit the Earth and land a man on the moon accelerating the pace of space exploration and aiding our nation's triumph in the space race. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy famously declared, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. With the moon landing in 1969, America showed the world that when we set our focus on accomplishing something big, we can achieve it, no matter how difficult. And it would not have happened without the brilliance and resilience of today's honorees, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Vaughn, Ms. Jackson, and Dr. Darden. Each of them graduated from historically black colleges and universities. <laughs> Hampton University, West Virginia State College, and Wilberforce University. And all four were initiated into the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. AKAs are having quite the year. <laughs> For seven decades, they went on to build legendary careers and helped to shape the exceptionalism 
of American aeronautics. When John Glenn was preparing to become the first man to orbit the Earth, he asked Ms. Johnson if the flight calculations were correct because he trusted her above all others to get it right. She later became a crucial member of the teams that landed Americans on the moon and ensured the success of the space shuttle program. Ms. Vaughn led the segregated West Area Computing Department, breaking barriers as NASA's first African-American manager. She subsequently led colleagues of every race and advocated on their behalf for promotions, pay raises, and better work conditions. Ms. Vaughn began her career in December 1943, holding the job title of computer. She was a computer before there were computers. <laughs> Ms. Jackson blazed a mighty trail after becoming NASA's first black female engineer in 1958 and made it her life's work to open the door for more black women to have transformational opportunities to work at NASA. And Dr. Darden spent her career developing supersonic plane wing designs and researching sonic boom minimization, which continues to play a critical role in our nation's military superiority. She retired. That's an applause line. She retired as head of Langley's Strategic Communications Office in 2007. Together, their contributions to space exploration and our understanding of the universe are innumerable. They proved an unassailable fact. Our diversity is a strength. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. These incredible women laid the foundation for some of NASA's greatest achievements. Today, we honor them and recommit to illuminating the journey of all Americans whose stories would otherwise be hidden. Our Congressional Gold Medal honorees confronted the dual challenges of racism and sexism. At the beginning of their journey, in Jim Crow America, there was no evidence to believe that those four black women would have a realistic path to succeed at the highest level of our space program. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And these four extraordinary women had faith. Faith in the power of American exceptionalism. Faith in their brilliance. Faith in their creativity. Faith in their determination. Faith in their excellence. Faith in our future and faith in God. And look at what the Lord has done. The world, the world, the world is a better place today because of these four mighty women and those who stand on their shoulders. God bless you. God bless our Congressional Gold Medal honorees. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mike Johnson. Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Man, I always got to follow Pastor Jeffries. That ain't right. That ain't right, man. We're so happy to have you here. What a great day this has been. For all of human history, we have speculated about what is above us. When we're young, the more we learn about the universe and our magnificent creator, the more blessed and the more small we realize that we really are. 
And until the launching of the first rockets, the only contact the physically that we had with outer space were the meteorites that happened to reach us here on the Earth. But things began to change in 1946, when America began to bounce radar signals off the moon. Then in 1957, we sent the small science lab into orbit, and in 1958, we launched our first satellite. By 1961, when President Kennedy challenged us to put a man on the moon, we were deep into the space race. At that time, the question was not just about wonder and amazement. It was about American leadership and security. With space serving as the final frontier, we were forced into a, a competition. Would space and, by proxy, our collective future be defined by American freedom or Soviet communism? To answer that question, we enlisted the help of hundreds of thousands of patriotic Americans. Americans across the country began to study math and science and engineering, and they began writing equations and solving problems we had never previously considered, all so that our country could continue to be the pioneering people we had always been. So when our rockets carrying man launched into orbit in 1962, they did so with the fuel of American willpower and determination and with the faith that we could do what no one had done and go, go where no one had, had gone before. Looking back and with this crowd before us today, we can see that we only progressed into space because we progressed here at home. Catherine Johnson and Dorothy uh, Vaughn and Mary Jackson and Christine Darden all helped us to get there. They worked to understand airflow and thrust and drag force, and they taught themselves and other women computer code, and they, they published groundbreaking research, and they put man onto the moon, and they walked right through every barrier put in their way, and they did it with incredible grace and integrity. That's what they did. So for their amazing work, they won many awards. They've had buildings and streets named after them. They were even part of that box office hit that we all love. But as I've learned more about these women, it's clear that it never was about titles and accolades for them. What they wanted was to teach others that it's always possible to achieve your dreams, even those that are out of this world. These four women and all those who worked at NASA and its predecessor helped us look both ways to the future we can create and the frontiers that are still ahead and to the people who need our care and attention right here at home. The hidden figures helped us venture ahead into the heavens where we learned more about ourselves. And we began to look at the earth from a different angle. When we did, we, we saw ourselves from God's heavenly vantage point as humans made in his image, endowed with inestimable dignity and value, regardless of the color of our skin, our gender, or where we came from. So today, for all their contributions to the space program and to society, it is my great honor to award these women with the Congressional Gold Medal. At this time, I'd like to ask Leader Jeffries and Senator Coons and Senator Capito, Chairman Lucas, Congressman Scott, Administrator Nelson, and Ms. Shetterly to please come to the front of the stage so they can present these five medals.
Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Andrea Mosey, Apollo Sample Lead Processor at NASA Johnson Space Center. Good afternoon. It is quite an honor and a privilege to be here representing the many women of Apollo and the space program who dedicated their lives and talent to making sure the sky is never the limit. Thank you, Honorable Speaker Johnson, Honorable Leader Jeffries, the late Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, and all the members of Congress here today for NASA's widespread bipartisan support. Thank you, Margot Lee Shirley, for raising awareness of all hidden figures across our NASA agency and STEM fields. Thank you, Administrator Nelson, Johnson Space Center Director Watch, the families of Ms. Jackson, Ms. Vaughn, Ms. Johnson, and Dr. Darden, my family, and all my colleagues who are here today to help celebrate this wonderful occasion. Thank you for intentionally seeking diverse opinions for solutions to humanity's challenges of living off the planet. I have had the honor of working at NASA since the 10th grade as an intern during the Apollo missions. And for over 49 years, I've worked in the lunar vault, helping to unlock the mysteries of how our planet and species form by analyzing the 842 pounds of rocks brought back from the Apollo missions. Over the years, we have worked with thousands of researchers around the globe, making thousands of discoveries about the formation of the moon, the sun, the earth, and the resources that exist off our planet. I thank Congress for its continued support enabling the first woman and the first person of color to bring back samples from the poles of the moon, from Mars, and across the universe inspiring a generation and providing opportunities for people more representative of the way our country looks to understand humanity's place in the universe. Thank you so very much for this wonderful opportunity on behalf of all the women of Apollo and across NASA. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction delivered by the Reverend Dr. Margaret Grun Kibben, Chaplain of the United States House of Representatives. Would you pray with me? Holy God, your splendor is like the sunrise. Rays shine from your hand where your power is hidden. While you, O Lord, are a mystery, and the challenges you lay before us each day are daunting. In you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And yet there is no creature hidden from your sight. All things are laid bare and open before you. Thank you for revealing the anonymous talent, the unequivocal grit and remarkable courage the costly humility and down-to-earth modesty of these women we honor today. By their noble contributions, you have demonstrated the inestimable value of each one you call daughter. In you, there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, no secret that shall not be known and come to light. In you, then, may these women find their reward, and in their service to you and to this country, May your blessing be granted to all those whose gifts and graces remain hidden. Then, 
May these, our heroes, sung and unsung through them. May this nation be forever blessed. We pray these things in the name of the one who is the God of earth and sky and sea. We pray this in your sovereign name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Thank you for joining us today.